it makes you doubt yourself. It makes you question yourself. And the problem with questioning yourself is that it's, it, 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 it distracts you. It distracts you from all the other more important questions you should be asking. Like, am I doing good work? Or am I producing something that will be of any value to anyone? Or perhaps the most essential question of all, do I like what I'm doing? Anyone who works in a creative field knows that there's a fine line between pretension and art. And of course, you never want to be called pretentious and you never want to be called petty. Because that one single word actually hurts. But in this talk, we are about to ask ourselves how being too quick to label someone or something or someone or something petty how it hurts not just the one who's being labeled, but also the one who's doing the labeling. So th throughout the course of this piece, I will be needing your help. The screen will be flashing specific lines that I want everyone in the room to read out loud. There are four key lines. First is, can we have everyone read it out loud? That's the first one. Second. <laughs> Third. And the last one. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, so I want as much feeling as you guys can muster throughout the course of this week. So this is called Stop Calling Everything. But here's the thing. I wrote these words for you, and I am speaking these lines for you. Hundreds and thousands of words, carefully chosen, rearranged, organized, delivered, molded and folded, and simmered slowly overnight, so that they would come out just right, just perfect for you. Words that are meant to make you feel something, anything, make you say it's perfect, just perfect, that they wrote them for you. And okay, maybe for myself too. But I wrote them for you, you see, so you would see what I see, feel what I feel, understand what I don't. And so I wrote these words, hundreds and thousands of them. But sometimes all it takes for you to shut me down are four words. Or three. And you Or two. Or one. I wish I could say I never agreed with you, never believed you, never looked at something I poured my heart and soul into and thought, shadow bang madib. But I did. It was a form of self deprecation, or maybe a form of self preservation. But whatever my motivation, I took to calling everything I wrote madib. Even if I wasn't trying to be deep, dying to be deep. Even if I wasn't, even if all I really wanted to do was to take my thoughts and offer them to you. And you and I, we say padeep as a form of dismissal, turning our backs on metaphors and poetry and creativity and movies with layered plots and subtitles and books that aren't about aliens and explosions and single women on the hunt for love in Manhattan and people who refuse to just take what they've been given. But just because we don't understand something doesn't mean it's not worth it. Maybe it's just not worth it yet. Maybe it means we'd have to work on getting to know it, work on building a relationship with it, work on understanding it. In classrooms and restrooms and at the dinner table, we talk about all kinds of shaming. You have slut shaming, fat shaming, skinny shaming, pretty shaming even. But what about smart shaming, and thinking shaming, and feeling shaming, and finding meaning shaming? A culture we foster every time we use open minds and big ideas and pouring emotions and the courage to write them down or say them out loud as weapons. Take everything we don't get 
and call it potential. Four. Okay, Three. Anyone. Two. Grab it, no sleep. One. Party. I am more than these phrases. And you are more than these tables. And it's time to stop acting like nothing that ever comes from you is ever insightful or profound or thought-provoking or any form of good. It's time to stand your ground, because if they can shut you up, they would. Don't let them. Don't let them let you lose track of your meaning. Don't let them make you underestimate your mind and all the answers you can find. Underestimate how real your capacity is to think and feel. Underestimate your ability to understand. Underestimate yourself. You know better. And I know how intimidation works, don't get me wrong. I know how hard it is to wrap your head around something you haven't known all along. And I know that to be scared of something bigger than you isn't easy. I won't pretend that's not true. I understand that fear is powerful, but you know what? Sorry. And I know there are cracks in that armor of cool you try so hard to maintain, strain to keep from falling apart. And I know that it's so tempting to simply give up on trying to conquer the mountains and seas of fiction and philosophy and art and poetry. It's not like you're about to get down on your knees and beg to be challenged. But please, look whatever it is that intimidates you straight in the eye. Resist the urge to run away. Give yourself a chance to stay outside the comfort zones of your mind. Because you never know what you'll find. Maybe a new favorite movie, or a book that will change your life, or a favorite artist, or a new friend, or new ways to think, and feel, and learn, and laugh, and smile, and love, and weep. All of this is possible. All of this, yours, if you can stop calling everything but Or, oh, let's go back. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Here's the thing. You and I, we are more than these words. And the fight against thinking shaming and feeling shaming and finding meaning shaming is not yet won and far from done. But you and I, we are more than these words. And we are more than that one word. You know which one. Thank you.